Tell me about this. This is our wound healing institute that we have. Um, Dr. Vardani, we do have some cards for him, our wound healing physician. Um, hyperbaric oxygen chambers, this is a sample of, of one. We do have two. And like Ted was mentioning earlier, it takes several treatments over a long period of time to actually heal some of these wounds that are venous stasis ulcers or diabetic ulcers where a diabetic steps on attack and the heel opens up. So it takes a while. It's a long-term, life-changing, altering, uh, something that happens to some of these patients that can be prevented because diabetes, on the most part, can be preventable. This is, uh, unfortunately, the hospital had the foresight because they saw the trends. That's why they got into the hyperbaric chamber business. It's not because they wanted to, because that's what's happening in this county. This would, right behind this slide, don't do it, Chris, but right behind this slide, you would have seen the nasty wound I was going to show you. So let me tell you about that nasty wound. <laughs> it's a wound in your end, you know, that you typically get that they get on their foot. Sometimes they don't feel the wound, so they continue to walk on the wound, and the wound gets worse. Until the point where if you don't get into here for about a year's treatment, the reason that wound won't heal itself is because diabetes does not allow the circulation, the oxygen-rich blood to get down to that wound and heal that wound. The hyperbaric uh, is a pressurized chamber, so when it's pressurizing yourself in that chamber, it is actually driving pure oxygen into your body. And because of that, the wound is getting the healing effects of the blood. So, this is, this is where you're going if you don't take care of yourself. Next slide. Alright, these are the graphs of the different uh, um, <coughs> boys, girls, and races that typically uh, are obese. Next slide. Look at this. Maybe we should stop by serving pizza at every ambassador lunch, Chris. <laughs> 425% pizza and candy consumption since 77. Wow. Fruit. One thing I asked the hospital when we decided to go with the hospital bringing our breakfast is I told Janet, I said, fruit. Bring me fruit. Fresh fruit. Fresh fruit. Tasty fruit. Beach candy. And I'm a guy. Phil knows me. I'm a candy holler. I love my candy. <laughs> but I'm trying to get a love fruit more. <laughs> Next slide. All right, here we go. One hour physical activity, five days a week. Are you kidding me? Kids, when we were kids, we were always outside. We were engaged. We were playing sports. We had a bicycle. We didn't have the convenience of the video games and everything. But this is the prime reason. And what I'm suggesting, and I'm just suggesting, that if parents encourage their kids to get more involved in some of these things, Maybe the calories that you consume can be burned up. Maybe we can get a healthier kid. All right, next slide. Mm, TV in the bedroom. Everybody's guilty of it. I got one in mine. Most people have TV in their bedroom. But it's just an interesting stat. Four and a half hours a day watching TV and movies. Wow. We're all guilty. Think about it. We're all guilty. <coughs> Eight to 18 year olds spend about an hour and a half on their phones. I would bet you that's probably not true. I say it's more. <laughs> I say it's more. <clears throat> Next slide. Read this. And this is what we're trying to bring to y'all today is a collaboration between businesses and individuals. It's, it's not going to be an easy task, and I don't want to sound like you know, we're preaching down or preaching to you, but it is a problem, and I think that it had to be addressed, and uh, I think that the hospital uh, support on this was huge. What we're trying to do is look at where we are today and in 10 years' time see if this program, partnering with you guys, is going to make a difference. Like junior chief, you have to start at an early age to affect change. <coughs> Next slide. Shane, you want to talk to us? Hi, 